Good morning everyone and welcome to our new session with our interview series. Today I have the big honor uh, to have as guest uh, Professor Dr. Aretha Papacostantino. Aretha, thank you very much for being with us. Can you please introduce yourself briefly? Yes, I, uh, so my name is Aleta Constantino and I teach uh, Late Antique History at the University of Reading in uh, the United Kingdom. Before that, I spent many, many years in France in the Byzantine Centre at uh, uh, Collège de France and I think I still identify to a large extent as a French Byzantinist. So. <laughs> uh, I, uh, I work um, I have worked on a number of things that are, have gone from religious history. I started with a, a book on the cult of saints and cultural, religious and cultural history. Um, and on the whole, my, my area of study, let's say, it is uh, what has, been, has become known in recent years as the late Antique and early Islamic Near East, that is a kind of a transition from the late Roman Byzantine Empire to the early Islamic Empire. Uh, so in, in that broader area, I work more specifically on Egypt because I work uh, with papyri, uh, which are a fantastic source because they, they are the everyday writing of antiquity and the early Middle Ages. So you get uh, a quasi-anthropological uh, view of local communities and how they went about their everyday business, which, which I find fascinating. And, and it also gives a kind of bottom-up approach rather than the usual kind of uh, elite texts talking about things. So uh, one of the things I've been interested in quite a lot is multilingualism and again you with papyri, you kind of capture a level of language, mm -hmm. written language still, it's not oral, but it's a level of written language that you don't normally get in learned texts. So that's, that's the broader area. Now what I'm doing here is working on a specific archive of the early 8th century, which is uh, all the papers of an administrator in a small, uh, in a local area in Egypt, a small town, and it includes the letters he was receiving from the top, from the governor, but also the letters that were coming up from the villages that were responses to what he was asking. And this is the part I'm looking at, but how all these letters that are written in Coptic, the local Egyptian language, the late version of Egyptian, they show how the villagers were reacting to pressure from above that was linked to ongoing war with Byzantium, with to, to big constructions, etc. So there was a lot of extractive pressure. And it shows, it really shows how the villagers kind of organized to adapt to that kind of pressure. And, and so this is the project I'm working on here. Great. Um, Aretha, for others, uh, as I just said, a uh, big honor to have you as fellow in this uh, center. Uh, so the next question is quite um, easy. Why did you choose Hamburg? Why did you choose our center? Uh, because Hamburg is, I think, for, for what I do, is one of the centers of the world. I mean, the world is polycentric, but this is certainly one of the big centers. Uh, when, I mean, in, in the area, as I was saying, late Antigua and early Islamic Near East, <laughs> uh, the, the ERC project of, you know, Stefan Heidemann's ERC project on the early Islamic Empire at work was a, was a big thing and everybody knew about it and we followed it quite closely. And when it ended and we heard about the foundation of this center, everybody was very happy because we thought, like, you know, this will allow this kind of work to go on. So, uh, so we knew about the centre a bit through diffusion <laughs> within the community, if you like. And the centre itself I mean, really asks the kind of questions that I've been asking in my research throughout. First, my first work was much more on Christianization through the cut of saints and things like that than, uh, than the later period. I sort of 
slowly moved towards uh, later centuries in, uh, over time. So now I'm working on things like hermetization and kind of cultural, cultural change. I, I seem to be changed and obsessed with change. <laughs> so and transitions. So this this is really the the themes of the center are are very important. Now Hamburg. Also, for someone like me who works with papyri, has the Center for the Study of Manuscript Cultures, which is a, another very important center uh, that has. It, it's a subject that has begun interesting people in all sorts of places, but uh, this center is, of course, the only one that has enough means and that kind of has enough expertise to really do a, both a comparative comparative kind of work and, uh, and very, very fruitful results. In, so, you know, you can insert your own work in a broader, much broader perspective. And of course, there's the Center for Ethiopian Studies as well here, which is a very rare thing. Uh, and Alessandro Pausi is someone I knew from before. So it's, it's really, Hamburg is really a place that for what I do is absolutely perfect. Um, the last question, Evita. Um, you have a fellowship of uh, three months. You yeah. already uh, spent one, one and a half, uh, 40 days, yeah. 45 days, more or less, with us. So um, you have already uh, an idea about our center. But the question is, which potential do you see in our center? And if you think that um, there is a specific approach that this center can and they love it. Uh, ah. uh, <laughs> that's a hard one. I suppose everybody you ask this kind of question will <laughs> tell you about their own subject. And I think something in linguistic, of course, I'm very interested mm -hmm. in linguistic change, and this is something that hasn't uh, that I haven't seen very much in the center. But of course it also depends on the interests of the people who are here so it will develop in different I do hope, you know, I do hope this center will continue for as long as possible because it's it really responds to the sort of questions people are asking today more generally in research. And I think uh, one thing that can be done is kind of a, an expansion geographically. Uh, I, you know, Sicily or even further east. Of course, further east there's a lot of other things going on. But, but still, I think, you know, a kind of broader the Mediterranean area could be could be an interesting way to go because it's the, because you can compare you, know, you can compare Christianity and Islam and the way they approached kind of cultural adaptation but you can also compare East and West or compare you know different types of so where the center of manuscript cultures for example compares throughout Eurasia and beyond that should be also to manuscripts from Mesoamerica. It also has its advantages to, to be very broadly compared. So I, I don't really know what to say. I think, you know, you, you, can, you could expand it thematically, you could expand it geographically. But uh, I think the, the basic questions that Center asks and the idea to put in parallel two processes that were very similar in many ways in the Mediterranean is a fantastic idea and it's uh, the center is really well known even among Romanists mm -hmm. I mean people I know were asking you how is it I was thinking of going so it's it's, it's really a, it's a good a great for us yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really a great to be to be popular <laughs> Arita, thank you very much for your words, your warm words, and thank you very much for this interview. Uh, we spent uh, uh, a lovely time together, five, seven minutes. Uh, thank and you for having me. It's, uh, <laughs> not only for the interview, but no, for we enjoyed your stay <laughs> here. It's great uh, to have you in our center. I repeat it. And thank you, everyone, to have been with us, and see you next time. <laughs>